Next of Kin, John Irvin's first Razzie-nominated film, the film which ruined the production company behind it. And it also features one of Ben Stiller's first performances on screen. Next of Kin is one of the most bizarre films I've ever seen. In the city of Chicago, a cop from the Appalachians has to find the mafia goon who killed his younger brother. Meanwhile, the third brother, who stayed in the Appalachians and is an all-out redneck, plans revenge of his own. Did I mention that the redneck is played by Liam Neeson? Yeah, it's trippy to hear that familiar voice take on a thick redneck accent, but that's just the start of it. It's actually mind-boggling to think of how much he resembles his ridiculous character in Taken, despite the fact that Next of Kin is almost 20 years older than Taken. It turns out that an ex-coal miner in the Appalachians is able to magically sense when bad guys are coming after him, as well as also magically decipher which specific group of bad guys may have killed his brother. He leaps from buildings onto moving trains, he uses an arsenal of guns that would make the NRA stand up and cheer, and even though he's only been to Chicago once, he seems to get around just as easily as if he's lived there all his life. The movie makes it quite clear that a redneck just in from out of town can go around fighting, waving guns, and acting out chase scenes with complete impunity. And then of course we have his interactions with Patrick Swayze's character, who is of course the protagonist. The relationship between the two brothers goes through all the cliches you can imagine with breakneck speed so that we can watch the hillbilly and the cop join forces against the mob. That sentence was exactly as silly as I expected it to be. This all goes back to my biggest problem with John Irvin as a filmmaker. He is incredibly inconsistent in terms of his films and his quality. If you told me that the man who made Next of Kin also made Raw Deal, I would believe you in an instant. But the man who did Hamburger Hill and Turtle Diary? I'm not saying that experimenting with different genres is a bad idea, I'm just saying that if he goes from such varying levels of quality, it makes you wonder that it's the same man directing these films. Of course, that's not to say this film is completely without quality. The soundtrack's pretty good, same as the cinematography. There's also a really good scene in the beginning where the main character calms down a shotgun-wielding man through their shared past. The issues of family and looking out for your own are reasonably well mirrored in both the protagonists and the antagonists, and that aspect of the story, at the very least, has a reasonably good payoff. I have mixed opinions towards the casting as well. Liam Neeson's character is completely absurd, but he's trying his best, at least. And while Patrick Swayze got nominated for Worst Actor that year, he at least had a few good moments here and there. Aside from those two, the cast is mediocre at best, unconvincing at worst. Bill Paxton is believable as a young and stupid hick. Helen Hunt is given the thankless role of the supporting spouse. Adam Baldwin and Ben Stiller try their best with very poorly written mafia gangsters. And Michael J. Pollard is completely wasted as a dim-witted landlord. Next of Kin isn't the worst film John Irvin's made, but it's definitely one of his weirdest. The uneven quality works against itself, and the movie builds up to what has got to be one of the most ridiculous conclusions to any film that I've ever seen.